morning my darlings starting off today's vlog on the iphone if you watched to the end of the last vlog you'll know why why that happened but um i have just had a text from john lewis that my new g7x camera should be arriving in a couple of hours so hopefully after i've done a really nice long workout i'm going to do a peloton and of Aha this morning because it's such a lovely day and I actually got so much work done in the taxi coming back from Suffolk yesterday that I'm actually ahead so I don't need to spend the morning doing emails or editing which is amazing news. So that's going to be my start to the day. It is the most glorious morning, really really lovely. So the next couple of days are uh, we've got some really really lovely things planned. I've actually got a meeting, a it'll be quite a long meeting, wedding related here at the house today so i'm very much looking forward to that um and it's a really lovely day to show the guys around and um let's just say a lot of amazing plans are going to be put in place today fun fact if everything had gone to plan tomorrow would have been the day that charlie and i were getting married our original date was june the 10th <laughs> obviously we're not getting married tomorrow that would be quite a bombshell to drop on you wouldn't it but i'll be really interested to see what the weather does tomorrow because obviously it's it would have been our wedding day but um something exciting is happening tomorrow as you may have guessed by the title of this video Finally, I'm going to be picking up my new car. We placed the order for this car back in August last year. Obviously, buying a new car, um, there have been a lot of hiccups for, or delays, let's say, for literally everyone that has purchased a new car in the last year will know of the delays. Whether it's COVID, Brexit, China, Ukraine, there have been a lot of delays, which is obviously understandable, but I can barely remember <laughs> what I even asked for with this car. Every single detail is um, something that I have chosen right down to the stitching on the steering wheel, the seat belt configuration, every single detail I designed meticulously and it really is my dream car. So we're gonna be picking that up tomorrow morning. But anyway, without further ado, this is me chatting to you and putting off starting my workout. So I'm going to join Cody Rigsby for a 30 minute spin and I'll catch up with you later. Well, a proper hello, my darlings, for the start of this vlog. And I can no longer say good morning because it's actually 5 p.m. <laughs> it's 5 p.m. It has been a super duper trooper, hallelujah, busy day today, my goodness. And um, only just getting around to picking up the camera, but fear not, I have so much to catch you guys up on. We had the most incredible, really just high energy, amazing, oh my gosh, it's just started pouring with rain. The most amazing meeting um, at the house today, this morning, for making loads and loads of wedding plans. It was really exciting. Um, it was a creative meeting, so lots of lots of ideas were flowing. And sometimes when I use my brain that much for creativity, my energy levels afterwards, like as soon as I closed the door after waving them goodbye, my energy levels just went. I <laughs> literally took a nosedive, but um, I then had lots of admin and emails to do, which is very boring. And I did go through a lot of that side of um, the job in the video that's actually just gone live. So if you want to see some like, what's in my inbox influencer admin stuff, then I definitely recommend checking out last Thursday's video. Oh, and then I was on the phone to our car insurance for an hour. <laughs> she needed to know every, literally every spec of the car that we're picking up tomorrow. Um, and it took a very long time, but that's all done. And now I can actually do some fun things and chat with you guys. And I've also been packing. I've been packing dresses for our trip. So when you guys are watching this, we will be in Barcelona. <laughs> I don't know why I said that so weirdly. Can you tell I'm a little bit hyper? We'll be in Barcelona when you're watching this video. And I'm on my new vlogging camera, hallelujah. That was another reason why I didn't start vlogging earlier because this vlogging camera just arrived, so it's back. Anyway, first thing I need to catch you guys up on is the new kitchen color. As I mentioned when I said that we were repainting it, there's actually not that much wall here in the kitchen, um, really only I mean, you can see most of it there. That's probably the biggest expanse of wall. It was a kind of duck egg blue color in here before, which matched in with the Arga, which we loved, but we are in the process of 
greenifying the kitchen. Neither Charlie nor I particularly love blue when it comes to interiors. And um, obviously our living room is shades of pink and green. We've got pinks on the walls and greens on the furniture to try and just really like draw, draw the inside in from the outside. The thing that I love most about this side of the house is quite frankly the view <laughs> outside the house. So we really love to create a little bit of a thread running through, drawing the eye outside. So having the green running through these rooms works really nicely. Um, and we do plan hopefully on re-enameling the Aga at some point. It's a very expensive job, so it's something that we're just kind of not quite ready <laughs> to bite that bullet yet. And we do have plans to get a new kitchen worktop again at some point. Um, it's not urgent in a green shade too. So you can see a little bit more of the green colour from this angle here. The colour, if you missed in the last vlog, is the Little Green Paint Company's Boringdon Green, which is a really funny name, but it's almost like a, it's a very earthy, kind of sagey, eucalyptusy green. Matches very nicely with my Our Place Always pan. And if you imagine that one day, hopefully, we might change these tiles and get a green Arga, then I think it'll, it'll look really beautiful all together and definitely suits the space it goes really wonderfully against the stone and the beams as well so this is my little project that I'm working on speaking of uh, wedding meetings this morning I am making our own rose petal confetti we have so many roses in the garden and just before they start to wither every evening during our garden walk I'm bringing them inside and just leaving the petals like so on the aga and they're crisping up and drying out beautifully. This is actually peony petals um, but I don't think peony petals dry out quite as nicely so I think we'll probably stick to roses. This is just from last night's rose collection and most of them are still coming out into bloom. This is probably four roses, but I thought what's the point in buying it if I can make it myself and it also makes the kitchen smell absolutely heavenly. Someone actually left a comment on one of my YouTube videos the other day saying that the new iPhones you can actually analyze and um, figure out what flower it is based on photos. So I thought I would give it a go. <gasps> this is amazing. Look up, plant. Delphinium Larkspur. Oh my goodness, that is so clever. And also, sadly, that's going to put Picture This out of business because I pay £20 a year for my Picture This membership and it does exactly that. But if you are ever wondering what a plant is, that's amazing. Such a good little hack. So these are Delphinium Larkspur and these are some beautiful blooms from Flowered. Now, I really wanted to go outside and create a beautiful display with these, but the weather has just turned a little bit miserable, so I think I might do that in the morning. I actually have got into a really lovely habit, I did it this morning as well, of going out in the mornings and collecting blooms from the garden and creating a little flower displays while I have my morning coffee. So I will do that tomorrow, but in other very exciting flower news... I've just propped you on top of the coffee machine because I'm no longer doing unstable surfaces when it comes to balancing my camera after the disaster in the last vlog. But anyway, darlings, I have something very, very exciting to share with you. Is this not <laughs> the most beautiful bouquet of flowers you have ever seen? I would say that it is, but I'm very biased because, my darlings, I'm very excited to share that I have actually collaborated with Flowered to be one of their flower designers this year, which is such a dream come true. You guys have been on this journey with me with gardening and falling in love with flowers, learning so much about flowers and really developing such a passion for so many blooms and just learning so much. When I, I, I always remember a couple of years ago, I was doing an Instagram, when we first moved here, I was doing an Instagram story tour of the garden and I didn't even know what an allium was. <laughs> and now I feel that it's funny because I think when you grow things from seed, you really develop such a knowledge and a passion for all these different blooms. And when even when I'm at like blogger events and I'm pointing at different things on the table, like, oh, what a beautiful fennel flower, or how gorgeous are these cosmos? 
it's a whole world that I've learned so much about um, in the last couple of years. So when Flowered asked if I would like to be one of their flower designers, I literally could not say yes <laughs> quick enough. So we are going to be working together on a few different bouquets throughout the year, obviously seasonal based on what's currently growing. And this, my darlings, is our spring summer 2022 bouquet. So this is actually, I would say, the 99% finished version. We were basically trying to figure out if we could get a viburnum in here, and this one doesn't have viburnum, but the final one will have viburnum in it. If you head over to my Instagram stories today, you will be able to see the final version, I'll be sharing photos of it, but this is the 99% complete version. We are, at the time of filming this, yet to decide on the final name. It could be the Cotswold Cottage Garden Bouquet, or it could be, of course, <laughs> the Perennial Millennial Bouquet. So let me talk you through the bouquet. This is exactly how it will arrive. It'll look like this. I will show you a few um, tips on how to take care of your bouquet and ways of styling it. But again, I'm gonna do that tomorrow because I really want to take some photos of it like this when the sun is shining. So I need to wait for tomorrow morning to do that. But um, let's go through the bouquet. So this is what it looks like up close. And I will go through with you why we chose these individual flowers. So of course I wanted it to be really representative of our garden here and the blooms that I love but also the blooms that I know work really well in your house. So for example, let's start with the classic. I feel like a romantic, a Josie bouquet has to have a rose of some sort. And one of my favorite roses in our garden are the garden roses and our David Austin roses. So this is the most beautiful, delicate blush pink garden rose. And these really create the centerpiece of the bouquet, the color is just so bridal, so romantic, and the fragrance of this entire bouquet is just absolutely heavenly. So the roses create that beautiful structure and draw the eye into the center of the bouquet. I wanted lots of greenery in here to represent our garden, and again, my personal preference when it comes to bouquets, we wanted it to be quite wild, nothing too tight and form-fitting, and I definitely encourage you to add your own foliage to this as well and make it representative of the wildlife around where you live, so I'll probably grab some branches, some other bits and bobs and really play around with this, but some bits from our garden, we have got some Alcamilla Mollis, which is one of both mine and Charlie's favourites that you will find in a herbaceous border. Of course we have got the Queen Anne's Lace. I always call it cow slip. It's a form of fennel flower I do believe but Queen Anne's Lace it's so beautiful, it's really striking. You do need to make sure that you keep changing the water otherwise they can go a bit floppy but actually I don't mind how they look when they're floppy. It's just it's just a natural part of a flower display. Um, I also wanted some bits in here which would last a really really long time and I'm talking literally like a year. So we have got a little bit of wax flower and some rosemary. Again, the rosemary like what we have got here in our garden and the wax flower, they last months and months and months and months. You can keep these in bud vases in your house literally until Christmas. Same with the eucalyptus, that lasts a long time. In the shaded parts of our garden, we have got ferns. So we've got a few little fern leaves in there and then some of the very romantic and delicate smaller roses as well. So my darlings, what do you think? I hope you love it as much as I do. This is available um, obviously on the Flowered website. You can either type in my name or the name of the bouquet, which I will put the final name on the screen here so that you can search it, but I'll also leave a link to this exact bouquet down below if you are wanting to send a thank you to someone, want to have one in your own home, or you know, it's someone's birthday. You don't need a reason or an excuse to send a bunch of flowers. So I will leave it linked down below if you would like to add the Josie bouquet to your flower wish list. Send a hint. If there are any boyfriends listening or husbands listening to this video, <laughs> then maybe you might like to treat the viewer to this bouquet, but yeah, I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to properly arrange it tomorrow, um, and I will give you some tips on how to make sure that your bouquets last as long as possible and look as beautiful as possible, and also how to 
spread them out, put them in bud vases throughout the house or keep it in one central piece. So this is something that we've worked on for a little while and I'm so pleased that I can finally share it with you, my darlings. So if you do end up getting one of these, please do tag me on Instagram because I would love to see how you are styling the bouquet. I wasn't even intending for my dress <laughs> to match the paper that the bouquet comes in, but I can't remember if I've showed you this one before. This is the um, most recent addition to my Josie dress collection, my fabulous Amazon dress collection, and I have actually ordered another one. So I've got one, I'll pop a picture of it on the screen here, coming in the cantaloupe colour, as in cantaloupe melon. Unfortunately it's not going to arrive in time for our trip to Barcelona, but I will be sharing it with you on my Instagram stories as soon as it does arrive. I do have some other Amazon purchases to share with you. And then I think I will actually um, sort out the bouquet because I can just hold it in the vase for the pictures. That will be fine. Okay, so speaking of flower arranging, first of all, I will show you this um, in action tomorrow, but I needed a few things for when I create the big, quite striking structures, flower structures in the entrance hall. So first of all, when handling chicken wire, because chicken wire is actually, I would say, the number one thing that creates the biggest statement when it comes to the structure of your flower display, it's actually very painful. <laughs> so this little kit, and I'll leave this exact kit linked down below, came with gloves, which I thought was such a wonderful idea. This little roll of chicken wire, which is absolutely perfect because I didn't need one of those massive like garden gardening rolls of chicken wire and this has got the perfect size holes because basically what you do and again I'll go through this in the morning is you put some chicken wire inside one of your vases and then use that as a way of keeping the stems in the perfect position so we've got the gloves the chicken wire and also a little uh, pair of wire cutters because even though the chicken wire has holes in it if you're working with larger stemmed flowers like alliums or the really thick cow parsley that's out now you actually need to create bigger holes in your chicken wire so this little set came with pliers very very useful i'll show you the fun fashion stuff upstairs in a second but the other practical ish bits that I bought from Amazon. This is a jelly slash uh, cake mold and it's made of silicon. I mean it looks really weird, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is very much gonna be hidden from view. Um, but I realised at the Jubilee weekend that I didn't have a proper jelly mold. I'm gonna keep a look out in antique shops to get like a proper beautiful brass jelly mold but this is obviously gonna be really easy to squeeze the jelly out because it's bendable and also it is oven safe so I can bake my lovely lemon cakes, my lemon and lavender cakes in this and it'll be really easy to peel the mold away and get the cake out. I realized in my last few weekends of attempting to bake that actually I didn't really have the kind of basic supplies that I needed. I was watching a video, you know, I watched loads of videos on baking tips and something that loads of the bakers recommended was that around your cake tin, you should put something called a cake band. Now, I'd never heard of them before. I've never seen any shops in the UK selling them before, but of course you can get them on Amazon. So you'll have to forgive my lack of the actual scientific knowledge, but basically, what these YouTube bakers say is that if you dampen this cake band, and this one is adjustable, you know, you can, it's like a belt, it's like a belt for your cake tin, you dampen it, you put it around the cake tin, and because this will therefore keep the cake tin temperature down, it means that your cake will cook more evenly instead of the edge getting cooked quicker which leads to the doming you know sometimes when you get a cake out of the oven it's like domed but you want it to be flat because otherwise you can't ice it properly this stops the edging of your cake tin getting so hot and therefore it all cooks at the same rate and it doesn't dome apparently but this is literally what all of the baking youtubers said so we've got a couple of these cake strips I will try them out and let you guys know if um, if they work or not, but I think it's a fantastic idea. And um, because Amazon literally has everything that you could possibly need for baking, I got this stack of cake tins as well so that I have some different sizes. I only have one cake tin at the moment and it's actually broken. So I have been putting a cake tin within a baking tray to catch any dribbles. So I thought why not treat myself to a full selection of proper 
cake molds. So I have actually ordered some rusted metal plant stands from Amazon as well. It has become my go-to, whether it's compost or seeds or plant stands to basically stop my peonies and my dahlias and my roses and basically everything from flopping over, especially at this time of year when everything grows so big and so quickly and then it rains and the flowers get so heavy and they flop over. So Amazon have got a great selection of plant stands, um, but it's still raining. So let's head upstairs. I'll show you a couple of my new Amazon fashion purchases and then maybe it'll brighten up for me to show you the other bits later. <laughs> Excuse the tap in the way, but I am just going to very quickly um, put my beautiful bouquet in a vase. So if you are lucky enough to be given a bouquet or one arrives in the post, it is obviously very important to rehydrate the flowers straight away. Sometimes they might look a little bit sad, a little bit floppy from the journey. That's because they're dehydrated. So the first thing you need to do when you get a bouquet of flowers is trim at an angle, trim all of the stems, only take like a centimeter off, trim at an angle to increase the surface area that the water can be absorbed and add it to a clean vase with some I actually don't think the temperature matters, but I normally do just like room temperature water. So say you are hosting and you don't have time to make it look pretty. All you need to do is take away the packaging, snip the stems and stick it in water. If you don't have time to snip the stems, don't worry, just stick it in water as soon as you can. I do have time to trim the stems now, so I'm gonna do that. Um, and then as I said, tomorrow I will do the proper arranging. I would highly recommend that you have a pair of chunky um, flower cutting scissors as well because these are a little bit more solid when it comes to cutting stems and especially woody stems can be a little bit too much for normal scissors and again I got these on Amazon, <laughs> so I'll leave them linked down below. So this is not how this bouquet is going to stay but again just imagine you've got friends over, you don't want to spend ages undoing them and um, sorting them out properly but this will perk them up while they drink water overnight so they should be looking perfect and fresh ready for my displaying in the morning okay i've brought you upstairs and popped you on a tripod i will apologize now i have got hiccups <laughs> and i've had them for like 15 minutes and they're not going away anywhere so i'll try not to hiccup in the middle of a sentence but just before I do a little try on, I received some new Tom Ford lipsticks today, so I thought I would give one of these a try while I do the try on. My goodness, that is, that's actually quite an autumnal colour. This is a really deep pink, this is the shade West Coast. I feel like I want something a little bit more pinky right now. Let's see what this one looks like. This one is called Mocha Rose. I feel like this is going to be quite brownie as well. That is beautiful. That is the most beautiful colour. But also I feel like a little bit too brown for what I want to wear right now. I feel like this dress needs a real pop of pink. So this is their Gloss Luxe in the shade number 21 in the buff. Ooh la la. We have got a super sparkly Tom Ford lip gloss. I'll put some of my favourite, which is Sable Smoke. This is my most worn lipstick of all time. It's probably more of an autumnal lipstick, whereas Spanish Pink or Fascinator are my um, spring-summer colours. That is a very glossy gloss, my goodness. Okay, now that we are lip glossed, let me show you the uh, dresses, the new Amazon dresses. Gosh, if you'd have told me a year, mm, maybe, when did I first get the Josie dress? I think I've been wearing the Josie dress for a good year and a half. It was very early, was it early spring last year or the spring before that I got the first one, which I think was my pink one. I actually think it might have been spring 2020, so maybe we have been wearing the Josie dress for two years, but if you'd have told me pre-moving house that Amazon would become one of my go-to places for buying fashion, I'd have thought you were totally, totally crazy, but actually some of the dresses that I reach for the most in my wardrobe are Amazon dresses, who can believe it? So I know that most of you are already familiar with this dress, it is so funny, so often, I would say genuinely, 30% of the time when I bump into you guys in real life, you're wearing the Josie dress, which just makes me so happy, I'm so glad that so many of you absolutely love it. 
So this is what they call the sage green version. I don't agree with that name. I think this could, should be called the mint version. And my other one, which I'll show you in a second, which is the army green one, that should be called the sage green, in my humble opinion. If this is the first time you're seeing the dress, it's every design detail that I love, square neckline, smocked bodice, ruffle, elasticated sleeves, giving you a very subtle puff sleeve, and then a wonderfully full skirt that's just such a gorgeous feminine silhouette. You don't have pockets, but I don't really think you need it. Um, and it is the most wonderful material, which is so easy to wash. So I wear this, I literally wear it gardening, I wear it around the house, I wear it all day, every day. Um, and today I have paired it with my little, can you see, little pointed toe flat shoes, which are another, another incredible purchase from Amazon. And again, I'm going to buy another pair of these because I have been wearing them so much. I will leave these linked in the description box down below as well. But let me show you this dress in a couple of other colors in case you still need that little bit of tempting. Okay, so this is the color which is called army green, but that I would say is sage green. All of these dresses have the exact same silhouette. Some of them have got slightly longer sleeves. I have got my more autumnal coloured ones in the longer sleeve form, but other than that, the design detail is exactly the same. So this is the army green colour. And just to give you a little close-up of the material, it has got a very, very subtle polka dot within the fabric, which I think is such a lovely design detail. I do have more iterations of the classic Josie dress to show you, but this is another of my favourites. It's a slight, um, slight design detail difference in that this one has got the shorter puff sleeves. I just love the neckline, it's so perfect for showing off your favourite jewellery. I'm wearing my, um, this is a necklace from the Missima, what's it called? Good Vibrations range. I love it, it's got this little flower detail and the flower details we also have on the dress so this one i definitely got this one last spring lemon color that's another thing that i love about amazon fashion these dresses are nearly always in stock so i that's maybe another reason subconsciously why i wear them all the time because a lot of the time i'll wear things and if they're not in stock then it's just really annoying because i can't share them i can't provide you with a link when you ask where things are from but these dresses have been in stock for a couple of years now which is fantastic so i'll leave this one linked down below as the daisy it's a little bit shorter slightly less pleated in the skirt um but the most beautiful soft lemon color with this really really pretty daisy embroidery okay so confession time i'm very lazy and most of the time i actually don't accessorize these dresses i don't add anything to them because i actually don't feel that they need it however a couple of weeks ago i bumped into i met a lovely lady and her mum at dalesford who both watched the videos hello if you're watching you totally inspired this outfit because the lady that i bumped into um, she was wearing this exact dress with a raffia belt and a straw bag and I thought she had styled it so beautifully so if you're watching you have inspired this look I would love to know how you guys are styling this dress please tag me on your Instagram stories I love seeing your mirror selfies or your gorgeous photos wearing this dress I guess because it's a more um, neutral colour, it really opens itself up to being able to be accessorised with some really fun pieces. But being a creature of habit, I've gone for the rattan and the raffia. The bag is also <laughs> from Amazon and I have paired it with, sorry, not a great angle, um, but with my little Aquazura straw heels, which are such a favourite of mine at the moment. I literally could not recommend raffia accessories anymore. They literally go with everything and I need to change my battery. And I would say another of my absolute favorites is the pure white version. I can't remember if it was this one that I got first or the pink and the pink is more of a midi sleeve, but I love the white, still probably one of my most worn and I think it looks so lovely with a variety of different colored accessories. Obviously I'm loving white and green at the moment, but yes, I just, Adore these dresses, as I know you guys can tell, I will leave all of my favourite colours linked down below. At the time of filming, they're currently all in stock from the UK seller. A very quick full length of the white, again just the same, same old silhouette, and raffia shoes, green bag to complete the look. And now, 
just in case you don't love the Josie dress quite as much as I do, I picked up some other really beautiful dresses in my latest Amazon order as well, which I will try on for you. Okay, my darlings, so if there is something that I adore almost as much as the previous dress, it is shirt dresses. And one of Amazon's own brands called The Drop is having an amazing season at the moment. A couple of weeks ago, I picked up the long sleeve white, feels like linen, but it doesn't crease as badly as linen, white shirt dress. And I saw that they had bought out a shorter version and I believe the longer version as well in this very natural linen colour and I thought it would be the perfect addition to my wardrobe. So again, a really beautiful neutral colour and I thought it worked really nicely with my Loewe belt. It would work really well with the raffia belt as well. And just to make it a little bit different to the white one that I picked up last month, I got the shorter version. I also thought this would be such a nice, if like work dress for summer if you work in an office and you want something very kind of understated. I feel like I should take this with me to Barcelona. I feel like it's a very Spanish chic lady, has to dash to work in the city but doesn't want to overheat. It's giving me those kinds of vibes. I might try it with a different belt. It's actually amazing how a belt can totally transform how a dress looks. I have added just a white linen, it's literally like a strip of white linen. I think this has come from, I actually don't know which dress this has come from, maybe my LK Bennett that I wore to Asuka with the ruffles. And because I've actually tied this one in a bow, it's given it a really lovely feminine finish. So you've got the kind of masculinity of it being a shirt style. Um, I like to roll them up at the sleeves, have a couple of buttons undone. Again, really nice to have a, a pretty necklace. But then by adding the bow, it's just given it a really lovely feminine finish to the outfit. So there's loads of different ways you can style this. It comes with nothing. It literally comes like this. So if you have, if you prefer a looser style, then obviously you can just wear it like this. But personally, things like this, I do like to cinch them in around the waist. Okay, my darlings, the final dress from my new Amazon order. And I've actually added the same belt into this dress. Again, I felt that it needed a little bit more cinching in around the waist. And this just adds such a lovely feminine design detail. I finally brushed my hair and I'm not having sunglasses hair anymore. So as I've mentioned approximately 10 billion times in the last couple of vlogs, when you're watching this I will be in Barcelona and I got this dress with kind of a travel in mind. The day that we get there, I don't know if we will really like unpack as soon as we get there. I, Whenever we go anywhere, especially European trips, I love to fly first thing in the morning and then have a full day. And sometimes you just want to wear something to travel in that you can explore and be comfortable in but still look quite chic. So this is the kind of material which is not going to crease firstly. It's patterned so, you know, if I, this sounds really silly, but if I spill a tiny something on it, it's not as obvious as if I spill something on a plain dress. Sometimes I feel a little bit more comfortable um, in a patterned item. Let me know if that's just me. I love a v-neck and it's got this really lovely uh, kind of it looks scalloped from afar, but it's actually just this really funky, <laughs> like spherical um, trim. I'm not usually a blue and white lover, but something about the fabric of this I thought was really pretty. And actually before we go to Barcelona, we're going to one of the beautiful coastal towns a little bit further north from Sitges, if you know that part of Spain very well. Um, and I thought this would be perfect for lunch and exploring the coastal area when we arrive. So yeah, those are my latest Amazon fashion purchases. Don't know if you can tell, but my energy levels have literally just plummeted again. I think I'm on a sugar low. I've actually not eaten enough today considering I did a really mega peloton this morning um, and I can really feel it in my legs. Like if I look in the mirror, I'm expecting to see like super muscly legs because of how they feel. They feel so muscly. <laughs> from my spinning lately. I don't look it, but they feel it. But anyway, I'm going to head downstairs. It sounds like Charlie's starting to cook. And um, yeah, I'm starting to get really excited about tomorrow morning now, picking up my car. And then we've got a really fun day planned. So you might remember that Charlie and I went to the Nonna Tonda stall when we went to the Blenheim Palace Food Festival and we signed up to their delivery. It's a little bit like Pasta Evangelist, but it's fresh pasta. And they said that they actually, excuse me, they said that they actually make it in the mornings before delivering, so it should be super fresh and delicious. And we have got here 
the spinach and ricotta with braised beef and it yeah. looks delicious. Pants. This is what it should end up looking looking like. darlings coming at you very fresh faced I've just done my evening skincare routine which I don't actually think has changed at all since I last spoke to you but as always using a beauty face halo or something similar these are from Dock and Bay um, and they're just a little bit bigger than a face halo so I've been using those to take off the majority of my makeup and then I used my beauty pie super healthy skin hot oil double cleanser it just feels very nourishing it to the skin and gets gets my face feeling lovely and clean i then used a eye and lip makeup remover from clay de po it's one of these biphase ones so you shake it up and it gets rid of all your makeup then i popped on as usual my skin and me and i was thinking about how long i've been using this it's probably coming up to a year now still number one biggest fan of Skin and Me and I've just had an email to say that my next month's one should be arriving tomorrow, which is great. It's active ingredients, so you get a new one every month um, and the active ingredients just increase in amount just by a tiny, tiny bit, which is fabulous uh, so that you don't, so that you continue to get the amazing results. And then I have popped the Beauty Pie Uber Youth Neck and Chest Super Lift Serum Spray on my neck area to give this area a little bit of anti-aging as well. So I've got discount code for Beauty Pie, um, the Josie sent me code, and I believe my Skin and Me discount code should still be active too. So I'll leave that in the description box down below. And as a little reminder, if you sign up to my mailing list, my newsletter, which goes out every Friday morning, um, then you'll get all the discount codes because I have quite a lot of beauty discount codes and they are all in a directory at the bottom of my email. But anyway, darlings, uh, Charlie's watering some plants, so I'm gonna watch Love Island and I'll see you in the morning. beautiful Friday morning. This is the day that should have been our wedding day and if we had stuck with our original date it would have been the perfect day which is a very good sign in my opinion. So today's the exciting day. In about an hour we are heading over to Silverstone to pick up my new car. Very very excited. While we're out of the house we are getting our lawns mowed. <laughs> the tractor mower is coming and before we get the lawns mowed I like to go around the edge of the wildflower turf and um, just kind of snip off any blooms that have fallen over with the weight of the blooms or the weight of the rain and put them in a little outdoor display here on our outdoor table. We're obviously going to be away for the next um, four or five days but Charlie's sister Scarlett is house and dog sitting and typically it's going to be amazing weather here <laughs> while we're away and I'm sure she's going to want to have lots of her dinners down here so I thought I would make this little um, wildflower display look nice and beautiful for her. I also just can't bear the thought of the lawnmower going over some flowers so I'm going to do a little bit of picking and a little bit of arranging before we head off to collect the car.
So this very casual little pink day dress, excuse Dexy barking, he's going a bit mad at today's deliveries. This very casual pink day dress is what I have been wearing this morning to do my flower arranging and pottering about in the garden and around the house doing a few chores. This is another of my favourite Amazon fashion bits. I get a lot of wear out of this, however I am going to get changed into a special little Zimmerman piece for our car collection and it's time to go, so I'll see you there. As you can tell from my smile, if nothing else, we are in the new car. Can I get a whoop whoop? Hallelujah. Only, only six months later than planned, but all the best things in life are worth waiting for. Oh my gosh. Oh, what an exciting morning. So I have actually just done my first road trip in the car. I've come to a very special location and I'll probably show you around the car properly when I get home, but I'm not gonna leave you on that much of a cliffhanger. As you can see, beautiful brown leather interior. It is the most beautiful interior I have ever seen in any car in my entire life. I literally chose every single detail in here, every stitch, every two-tone. So you can see we've got a tan leather and then a chocolate leather. The steering wheel is the most beautiful, fairly petite, you can't tell from where you are right now, but a fairly petite steering wheel. The drive, have I even said what it is? This is a Porsche Cayenne e-hybrid. So it's uh, still a 4x4, four four. I love my big cars, and it is in the colour truffle, which is just the most unusual and beautiful and elegant colour. There are many reasons why I chose this car. Um, I, I've always loved Porsches. My dad had one when I was uh, much younger, he had a very old Porsche car, and I always have known them to be the most incredibly well-built cars. I think they look beautiful. You don't see that many of them on the roads, which I love. Um, as you can see, interior-wise, it is so luxurious. And it's not quite as, like, in-your-face, showy-offy as some of the other cars that I considered. Let's just say... And the drive, I've just driven an hour and a half from Silverstone where we picked it up to Southrop, which is, um, I'll tell you what I'm doing in a second, but it was just the most beautiful drive. You really feel like you're glued to the road. And boy, oh boy, considering I had it on hybrid mode the whole time, so it was like flicking between petrol and um, electric, this car has got power. My goodness, when I put my foot down, I was thrown back in my seat. It is seriously powerful, so I'm going to have to get used to it. Um, but anyway, I'll show you more about the car later because I've actually only got two hours to spend here. I, Before we knew we were picking up the car today, I was planning on getting here at 11. It's now 2 and the event finishes at 4. Basically, I'm here at Sophie Conran's house. Uh, Sophie Conran being the interior designer and interior uh, website. She has the most amazing home product. Today, her home and gardens are open for the National Garden Scheme, which is a charitable scheme you pay to enter people will open their private homes for one or two or three days a year Sophie's home is open today and uh, proceeds go to the Marie Curie cancer charity which is also very very close to my heart you may have also seen especially if you are a perennial millennial and your phone knows what you love you may have seen Sophie's iconic wooden greenhouse um, popping up on your sponsored Instagram stories. I know that I get served that a lot and I know that so many of my friends do. I can actually see the wooden greenhouse from here so I'm definitely going to go and explore that. Apparently she's got an incredible kitchen garden and also she's doing like a fair, like a summer fair. Various brands, hopefully her own brand too I'm sure, in inside the house. I just drove past the house, it looks magical so without further ado let's go and explore. This 
is the Sophie Conran shop pieces. We've got some gorgeous tableware, beautiful embroidered tablecloths, crockery, and some beautiful blooms on the table in this incredible room. Look at all the gorgeous pieces of art and that beautiful light fitting. So much interior inspo. A few of the bits in here are 20 to 30% off, which is amazing. These are some beautiful hand painted little side plates, like snowdrops or Lily of the Valley. And scallop detailing is very synonymous with Sophie Conran. We've got a little scalloped um, marble kitchen roll holder, and so many of these beautiful ginger jars. Gosh, this is the perfect day for their event. We've got a little barbecue set up. I have got some carrot cake from inside. I'm going to have a look through her herbaceous borders and see what kind of blooms she's got. I love the big, I think they're Texas balls. Lots of alliums, of course, fennel flower, lots of napita, catmint, which the bumblebees are loving. Some poppies about to come through and she's got the same color scheme as us the purples and the greens. A lovely little setup here. I love these chairs. I've got these on my wish list. I've seen them for sale somewhere. They're very expensive. Um, but I can't remember where. If anyone, if anyone knows, let me know. What a perfect site, the typical English country garden party. This is the kind of weather you can only dream of. Really would have been a perfect wedding day, my goodness. They've got some beautiful alliums in here, the white flowering kind. And what's really lovely is, I don't know if you can see the structure here, I obviously don't want to get any faces too close in because I don't know any of the people here. Um, but they've got two rows of herbaceous borders, so you can really walk amongst it. And then a big chunky herbaceous border out towards the front of the house. It's a really nice layout, and if Charlie and I ever wanted to expand our herbaceous borders, we could definitely do this outside the front of our house as well, this kind of layout. And then you might have heard me in the past talking about garden rooms and Sophie's created these with these little U archways, very inviting. Let's go and see what's through here. In a shaded border, some hostas, some ferns, <laughs> hiding the oil tanks over there. So this little area is actually on the driveway to the house. There's this beautiful gateway here covered in clematis. I'm not sure if the gate still opens anymore. Maybe it opens the other way. This little bush is just buzzing with bumblebees. There's some antique pots thrown in there and a ginormous artichoke. We've actually planted an artichoke in the kitchen garden and I wasn't sure how big they were going to get. But my goodness, that is ginormous. Look at this house and it's such a gorgeous day for a garden event. My next stop is the kitchen garden. And here it is, the infamous wooden greenhouse. And oh my gosh, it's so exciting to see what stage someone else's kitchen garden is at. She's got her courgettes planted, so many artichoke, giant fennel flower, and I love these, I think they're witch hazel um, or hazel hurdle structures. Such a great way of keeping things in, but also I'm sure her squashes will be growing up there before too long. We've got some artichokes ready to harvest almost. All in this bed here. She's even used the hazel to make these beautiful archways. So lovely, it's such a beautiful effect. Very kind of country garden, handmade kind of feel. Some beautiful flocks. And what's this? This is absolutely beautiful. I'm not actually sure what this is. Seems to be attracting a few of the aphids, but that is stunning. Even though the iPhone uh, photo thing is very, is obviously on everyone's phone, I do still prefer picture this, and this is a Nigella Love in a Mist, according to picture this. So this 
this is probably about three or four times the size of my greenhouse when it comes but so lovely to see a wooden greenhouse you don't see it very often and look at the detail on the door that's so lovely almost a little bit church-like and then they've got the live wood edge live edge wood um, long table in the middle with the terracotta pots and I'm just a little bit in love with this sink station over here my goodness great place to water your seedlings gosh I'm looking a little bit um, a little bit windswept it's quite a blusterous day albeit a beautiful one it is so heavenly here my goodness in case you haven't guessed I've actually come here by myself obviously we drove together to pick up my car but Charlie had too much work to do before our holiday tomorrow and I definitely didn't want to miss out on coming here and I'm really really glad I did it's so lovely to look around and see what she's growing um, get inspired by the space even the structures that she's built to um, to grow the veggies up and to see the iconic greenhouse in real life. It really is the most beautiful growing space. Also, just looking at how this essentially, sorry about the wind, would obviously have just been a plain lawn, but it's, um, it's a great way of imagining how you could transform a paddock area. If you've, if you've got a spare bit of land and you can do a little bit of digging then gosh what a transformation i've just spotted she's got a claverton cloche the same brand as mine okay i'm back in the car <laughs> and i still can't believe what i'm seeing in the view Ooh. Sorry, I completely forgot that I had a phone call scheduled for this exact time. Where was I? I think I was having a moment, just not quite believing what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. I'm so, so happy that I went with the tan seats. I think they look beautiful and my seat belt is chocolate brown. All of these little details. I love them. I love them so much. We've got a little uh, crest in the headrest here. We've got... I'm going to flip you around and show you um, my kind of driving deck. I'll probably show you some more when we get home, but this is the steering wheel. Obviously, it's very hard for me to show you the size, but it's actually fairly small, which just means it's so manoeuvrable. You know, you can turn really, really quickly. You've got the big Porsche badge on the front here. And I triple checked with the guys and the correct pronunciation is Porsche. I'd always been saying Porsche, but it is Porsche. And as you can see, this beautiful chocolate brown, we have got the, um, this is actually walnut, and then the tan and the chocolate brown here. I've got some really nice detailing on the inside, some contrast stitching, handles. Um, this is my central system. It's obviously an automatic. This is the knob thing um, and then this is where I change the mode so I can drive fully electric um, on that setting there hybrid sport or sport plus and then if I press this middle button oh there we go it gives me a 20 second sport response booster so say I was driving electrically and then I wanted a little bit of the powerful engine to help me overtake someone or get out of somewhere fast then I can give myself a 20 second boost um, I can do 30 miles on electric or I can drive it in hybrid mode which is the most economical if I'm doing long journeys but most of the time I do plan on driving it fully electric but I love the fact that I can just switch it into hybrid or sport mode to change the setting uh, this is all pretty much like an iPad pretty much it's got my Spotify it's literally got my whole like iPhone system in here I've got an hour and a half journey, gosh, until I get home. Back seats, again, in at the tan, close up of the headrest. Yeah, gosh, it really is so beautiful. I will show you more when we get home. I'll do a proper little car tour once I'm home and I will also show you what I purchased because I did make a few purchases at Southrop House. They had some lovely brands inside, including Time. It was lovely to see the ladies from Time there. I got some gorgeous photos that I'm going to share on my Instagram stories when I get home. Um, but yeah, now it's time to plug in to a Sheerlux podcast and head back home.
back home again and it is super windy so I hope you can hear me but I wanted to show you my purchases from um, the house so I picked up this beautiful ginger jar which is a Sophie Conran shop ginger jar I thought it'd be great for flower arranging it's a really good size I'm actually going to do a cowslip I got these from the side of the road um, and delphinium display in there now I might film a TikTok of how I do it with the chicken wire so I'll leave that I don't know if you can even link TikToks if I I can I'll leave it down below um, and then I also picked up these lovely sage coloured candles I thought they were very pretty this is the top to the ginger jar and there was a maker there and there was a lady there selling these beautiful handmade soaps and they just smell absolutely gorgeous and look absolutely beautiful really nice little gifts in these pouches so just a small little haul it wasn't intended on being a shopping event but I thought I'd add these to my collection I also got this bunch of flowers from Portia to say sorry for <laughs> the delay which is really sweet of them so we're gonna pop all of these in vases and in some water um, get them all looking beautiful. Scarlett and her friend Maria will get to enjoy them over the next few days while they are house sitting for us. Come down to the kitchen garden to get some salad leaves. We're going to have a nice barbecue for dinner. Oh gosh, it is seriously blusterous. You probably can't hear anything I'm saying. I've already roped Scarlett into. Uh, <laughs> she is looking very glam and very, very uh, perennial millennial in your floral dress. Very Wingard inspired by Josie. <laughs> Love <Gorgeous>. it. Look <laughs> though, actually. New look! Yeah. My goodness! so many good pieces in it at the moment. Stunning! We love a smocked bodice. Mm. So we're just getting some lettuce leaves to have with the barbecue and um, living out our wholesome best life. <laughs> I swear every time I pick up the vlogging camera is when the wind starts to blow. It has been perfectly calm until this moment, but I am going to use the beautiful delphiniums from Flowered to create a gorgeous display. Hopefully it's going to be gorgeous in this vase. These are the roadside wildflower that I just picked up and look how stunning they are. Some absolutely giant flower heads. They look like giant fennel flowers, but I'm pretty sure they are um, cow parsley. I'll use my app in a second. I just snipped these alliums from the garden. They've got some really great structure to them. Look how giant they are. I mean, that is over a meter long. So I think they'll be fantastic for in here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to wear my gloves because when you snip chicken wire, it can get a little bit prickly. And then I've got my um, flower cutting scissors for the stems. I always put a little bit of water in the vase to start with and if you are going to pick flowers from the roadside it's a really good idea to put them in water as soon as you get home and obviously the delphiniums have been resting in water for um, the last 24 hours. Well, my darlings, it's been a long day, but I'm just running around the house now, pulling together those last few bits and bobs because we have got to set our alarms for three o'clock in the morning for our holiday. And perfect timing. Had a lovely delivery arrive today from Look Fantastic, including so many of my favorite hair pieces. And this is incredibly generous of them. They said that if you use the code Josie, you can get 20% off site-wide, which is amazing. We've got my Factor 50 La Roche-Posay. We've got, I always, always, always use the Redken One United spray as my um, post hair wash leave-in conditioner. It literally does everything from defrizzing to heat protecting. Um, it's the best and I will use this for the rest of my life. And then the Color Extend Red Ken Blonded Shampoo is what I tell all of my blonde friends to use. It is a color depositing shampoo. So it instantly gets rid of any kind of warm yellowy tones for blondes. And I can honestly tell you, this works better than any other toning shampoo I've ever tried. I'd recommend leaving it in your hair for around three minutes. And a couple of other bits from the Blondage range. Ooh, Blondage High Bright. I've actually not tried these before, so I'm going to give those a go probably tonight, actually. And I shall report back with how they work. But that's very, very generous. 20% off with the code Josie.
And darlings, I'm gonna end the vlog here because I need to finish packing and I think this has already been a very, very long one. So I hope you enjoyed today's vlog with uh, coming to pick up the car with me and a dress haul and everything else. Uh, so what shall I get you to leave in the description box? If you watched to the end of the video, let's leave the word raffia in your comment down below to celebrate the raffia belt and the shoes, which I'm now going to pack. But darlings, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.